been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Our first time, and they're really taking care of us, and it's really nice. Did it, um, when, when did your uh, film pre exactly premiere? It was uh, um, Friday. On Fri Friday. Friday. When the Kings were playing. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. They made it so hard so all, the, all that cheering was for you outside, yeah. right? They made it hard for a lot of people to get to the screening because the, <laughs> there was insane traffic. So I will remember when. <laughs> so after the movie, w was it a pretty good reception? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Q&A was nice. Uh, had like, nice, nice conversations with people about the film. So, yeah, yeah. it was great. And we have another one tomorrow. Oh, terrific, terrific. Everything's good. Everything's looking up then. Yeah. So how did you guys come up with this idea for I mean, recommended by Enrique? Um, well, uh, I guess half of it um, is kind of based on a, uh, a story that happened to us. Um, and that's the, the half with the actress kind of portion. Uh -huh. um, we were actually involved, uh, one of, or not one of the, the first films that we were kind of um, involved on together uh, was in Del Rio, Texas. It was in that city. and. Uh, it was this kind of, uh, you know, this B-movie kind of independent, you know, uh, no-budget um, kind of horror, you know, horror movie. Um, and uh, there was a director who would constantly, you know, go missing to go to L.A. to kind of raise money for the movie. Um, and every now and then, uh, this production would hire actresses to come in uh, to Del Rio from Dallas or Austin or San Antonio. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, to be there for the weekend or for something. To be in this movie, and we just always, you know, the whole time when we were on this production, um, you know, we knew it was kind of uh, not the kind of movie that they were selling it to be. You know, they, it was, they, they were always telling us it was kind of a, a Hollywood-backed film and kind of this thing, and, and we knew it was just a bunch of kids trying to make a movie. You know, and we were one of those kids. You know, so uh, but actresses would come in, and we always just thought it was very interesting to kind of see actresses who would, you know, are trying to kind of build a career and make a resume for themselves as an actress to come to this town and, and then be eventually directed by a group of teenagers and making this movie that wasn't going to go anywhere and you know yeah so we always just thought that was an interesting kind of scenario and uh, that, that film set and that, that kind of uh, you know instance um, which happened 15 years ago or so now always kind of really stuck with us and kind of uh, uh, you know o over, the, over the years as we, as we started actually making real films and, and moved on to features, um, we always kind of had it in our mind to kind of go back to this idea and, and make something inspired by uh, our memories from this experience. So both of you were on that production 15 years yeah, ago? Yeah, we were living in San Antonio and uh, a friend of mine in undergrad, we met in undergrad, uh, said, hey, a friend of mine is making a movie in Del Rio, you should come. So he invited me and I went to a set. Uh -huh. yeah. to and I have family in Del Rio. I mean, I've been to Del Rio many times before that, and so I knew the town and I knew some people there. And, and it was just, you know, it was the summer, and we we didn't have anything to do anyway. So we, you know, we were interested in film. We both knew we wanted to make movies, and we figured, yeah, hey, you know, if it is a Hollywood thing, great. And if it's not, it's a fun time, and you know, we, you know, we don't have jobs anyway. So. So, so what kind of trick was this? What well, what was the entire purpose? Of Ultimately, it? what it, it's a really, really, really long story. Um, it's really it's, strange. Yeah, really strange. But ultimately, a guy was uh, basically conning people in this town to give him money so he could make a film. I mean, the ultimate goal for him was to make a film. Uh -huh. um, but he just, you know, he didn't have, he wasn't savvy enough to kind of use the resources that he got from people. I mean, he ended up taking money. A but lot also, of money there him. was like a lot of he thought he was the son of God. He That's was in love with like weird. all the fifteen-year-old girls. That he was he in his thirties. We were all teenagers. You know, uh, uh, that he would bring to put in his movies. He was really never there. He would always say that he either is in LA or he's fighting demons that were trying to stop the movie from being made. We caught on to it. We just were too young to feel scared of the whole situation or like to like. Pull out of it, it wasn't a waste of uh, our time. <laughs> uh -huh. We were like, oh, this is awesome. Like, yeah. this is just so bizarre. And it just, yeah, it's probably the most surreal experience of our lives. Um, and then the, at the end, the FBI got involved and shut down the studio, which was a little apartment that he, like, put some computers in and gave uh -huh. us some, like, costumes. And, yeah, there were costumes and samurai swords and some rollerblades and... He would say, okay, what we will do today, uh, Daniel, write a scene in the movie that we don't even know what the movie that uh -huh. was being made is. It was just like a mad experience, but... 
every now and then he would hire a really like bona fide wannabe actress that should come to town and she'll have to deal with this. We knew it was a sham. Yeah. But you see an actress coming, she's getting paid, she's in a, like a motel and she's like trying her hardest to do what she needs to do because it's a role. Uh -huh. And we always felt like there's something like a little sad about that she's having this experience but also like fascinating for us on like the per like perseverance of somebody that wants to follow their like uh -huh. career path so so at what point during the this fake production that you guys figured it out <laughs> oh very early on except that the we were spending the summer he was uh, paying our gas and food and we were having a good time. It was really hot and nice in Texas. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we, we got to really like have our hands on cameras and equipments. Mm -hmm. And we were interested in film. And that was an opportunity for us. By the end where the whole thing shut down, we ended up making our first short with the camera from that bad production that we were on. So yeah. it kind of is like, like uh, it kick-started our like, careers wow. in a very weird way. And, and throughout this entire fake production, you guys would not tell these actresses? No, I mean, no. you know, well, it was, you know at they some were points not too, hired by us. At <laughs> some points, too, you know, um, there were points where, you know, we knew that the movie he wanted to make wasn't really going to happen. But at the same time, because there were times when he'd say, you guys think of a scene today and we'll shoot that. Like, there was always the, you know, the mindset that, well... We're making something, like, uh -huh. some, we can do something. Also, he was like, paying you know, the actresses. Yeah, Those so. actresses were coming, like, completely, like, like separate. Uh -huh. And they were getting paid, and they were coming, and they were doing scenes. And weirdly enough, he made, at the end, a 15-minute trailer uh -huh. um, that is on a VHS tape that we have. That's the only, like, remaining footage of that crazy experience. And we have that VHS tape. And every now and then we watch it, and we feel like, this is incredible that we were even <laughs> you know, ultimately, it was still fun. Like the whole thing, it was never like, "Oh, yeah. we're bored." Like this yeah. isn't a yeah. movie. No, it was still like, "Oh, this is fun." You know, it was fun to be in the studio and fun to kind of be getting dressed in the costumes and fun to start shooting at midnight. And we were with a bunch to, of kids around our yeah, age, so yeah. it's like for us, it, w it was absolutely there was no loss in this. Um, so you guys got paid, right? We're not sure get paid, but we didn't waste any money. Like we, you know, we didn't he spend gave, any like, money, and we didn't, yeah. you know, lose any money. We were so, more, yeah. like we were what would equal an intern. We were not getting salaries, but we were getting our gas and our food three times a day, you know. And every now and then we could stay in hotels that he would pay for because he was getting money from the parents of the actors in the town, like the children. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So we didn't know where the money's coming till the end, but. We knew that, that he had money. We don't know where he's coming from with the money. And see, that was also one of the weird things, too, because at the beginning it was like, I don't think this is a Hollywood thing. But then he'd show up and he'd take everyone to the mall and he'd spend a bunch of money, you know, and we'd be like, but I know he's not rich, so how is he, you know, where is this money coming from? And so there was always, because he would always say, you know, I have some money coming in this week from Hollywood, you know, blah, blah, blah. We were 18 and 19 years old. Like we're not, we were not like also neither scared, neither really deeply uh, analyzing mm -hmm. the situation. We caught yeah. on that there's some sort of scam, but we really did not. Yeah, care. it was always fishy. We were too young to like even do anything about it. We were just going along for the ride. Yeah. And we were, yeah. because he promised us to bought, to lend us a camera to shoot a short. Uh -huh. So me and Jenny were like, okay, let's go along with it. We're gonna yeah. get a camera to make a short for us, and it will be our first experience. So that is so weird. Yeah. yeah. Now, of course, this is 15 years ago. Do you guys ever know knew, know what happened to him now? He's still in town. We think he's, he's still in Del Rio, despite the fact yeah. that he took we everyone's money? I think yeah. so, yeah. We don't really know for sure, but we think he is. And a few years ago, we saw that this he's was all... He's trying to do it again. This was all, I think, pre-MySpace <laughs> time, you know. It was like 2000-ish. Uh, and then a few years later, after this whole that whole thing blew up, we saw that he was on MySpace or something, like trying to start up another... Like, you know, with the same premise. Yeah, like, you know, another one of those things. So, yeah, he might still be out there doing something. Maybe you maybe should that. join him for another <laughs> production. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. But, of course, um, there's technically kind of two storylines yeah. to yeah. Uh, yeah. a record. So that was the movie. main, you know, that was the yeah. first one. And, and then, then along the way, you know, uh, when, when coming out, like thinking about and, and finally uh, deciding to do this project, uh, we wanted to juxtapose it with a, another story. Also, about, there was about, something uh, interesting to us to like um, make maybe something that because 
the whole part of the actress's story is this like character that's trying to play a role the whole movie, but she really can't, but she's really trying. And we thought a nice like balance will be some like other character that is like a classic role, mm -hmm. which is like a noir character, like cowboy, mm -hmm. assassin type of thing. And from that came that idea. So yeah. so where where did the this cowboy assassin just came from? Just popped in your uh, head or something? Yeah, just infatuations, you know, film noir was a big one, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, 1950s kind of uh, CIA, you know, kind of, uh, you know, covert kind of uh, assassination ta tactics, you know, the Cold War, and kind of poisoning cigars for Castro, yeah. and stuff like this, you know, the and we thought kind of elegant crimes, you know, kind of that kind of thing. And we're really fascinated by older people. Uh -huh. We had an older person in our first film. We had a lot of shorts about older people, and we thought, oh, it would be awesome to have an older character, like like Latino cowboy, that you watch, but you kind of feel for, that you feel he's a sad character that like is always recalling like lost love and lost friends and mm -hmm. things like this. But at the end, you, you know, like yeah. you build this like empathy for someone that you would never think is an assassin but that's what they do in life well you threw me off i mean he was walking around with two palm trees all the time and i was like why is there a mexican guy to walking around with two palm trees um so yeah uh, that kind of came and it's just you know developed it and i think you know that that side too is really um a reflection of our you know, infatuation and kind of uh, love for, you know, South Texas, Latino, like border town kind of mm -hmm. culture, um, which, you know, uh, including this experience in Del Rio with the, the film set, but even after that, you know, like I said, my family, I have a lot of family in Del Rio, but I'm from San Antonio. And she spent a lot of time there. We've done a lot of traveling in Mexico and, and we just, we love, you know, um, there's something about that, you know, the mystical nature of that culture and kind of, um, you know, uh, yeah, and we wanted to do something that in, in, infuses that in some way, you know, and uh, Del Rio and, and in particular kind of, you know, I think border towns in general, at least Mexi you know, Mexican-American uh, border towns, they have this kind of very interesting nature in which they are not really fully American or not really fully Mexican, uh, but they still are both at the same time. You know, like um, like the kids believe in La Llorona, but they all go to Walmart. It's like the perfect American Mexican combo. You know, mm -hmm. like they have both culture infused, like yeah. incredibly, like well, in a weird way. And it's yeah, that that fashion. was the entire purpose of the film. Was it wasn't just to showcase about an actress, you know, being stranded in a town or an assassin mm -hmm. thing, but it was actually to showcase much more of a cross cultural yeah. type of yeah, set, exactly. type, type of setting. Um, we, we wanted also to like bring the Rio. The Rio is the third character of the film, like mm -hmm. specifically, that these stories would not happen anywhere else. They happen in this specific space. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to kind of bring everything we experienced, mm -hmm. again, from our like point of view of that culture. Um, that's for us is quite fascinating. So, um, the so Loteria, the every, mm -hmm. everything we know or we experienced there, we wanted to bring into the film. So tell me about Del Rio itself. What was this film that you made was in was it also made in Del Rio or was it someplace else? It was in Del Rio. We even tried to use the same not tried, we used the same studio that we were in like uh -huh. fourteen years ago. It's now like a preschool thing and the people were like, Oh yeah, we remember let's We'll let you use it, and um, we recreated a lot of the scenes in the same streets that we were like we remembered with same mm -hmm. similar costumes and things, and um, yeah, and we know the town very well. It's a very small town, and um, everybody was involved. I think all the Rio was involved. Mm -hmm. the, the mayor in the commercial is the previous mayor and the first woman mayor of the Rio. The TV station is the TV station of the Rio. These are the people that work in the Rio TV station. The barber is the barber in his barber shop. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to bring the real people and real locations. We didn't. We picked them. We didn't set them mm -hmm. in a way. Um, yeah, we involved the whole community. It was the best, like, funnest project ever. Um, and everybody was super supportive. They were like, they, you know, we, everyone offered locations and came and became an extra. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, we wanted to like 
make it as authentic as possible and somehow you watch the film and you feel like you took a trip to that place um, so. and and no one thought this time around it was a con no. <laughs> no but we when we would recreate certain things we would be like oh my god this is incredible like we were one when we would watch the teenagers in our movie play roles we would be like one like there was a time when we were these kids you know and nothing happened with that movie like we were part of those kids that like and we always said oh i hope something happens with our movie because otherwise like history repeats itself for uh -huh. new generations yeah. of nothing teenage happened, kids it was kind of a con, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um but i think we had yeah it was a so, so the town was pretty enthusiastic, the fact that you guys are showing your film at the L.A. Film Festival. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, especially that uh, the, the lead, Lino, is in, from Del Rio. Yeah. He also was the postman of Del Rio, so everybody knows him, and everybody knew Lino was coming to L.A., and so the whole town was, like, buzzing about it. Has Del Rio seen the movie yet? Not yet. This, is, this was the world premiere here. Uh -huh. Um, we'll have we, a yeah, screening. We're going to have a screening. And the whole, yeah. yeah. whole town will be there? Yeah, yeah probably. Wants to come, yeah. Is, it, is, is this a big town? <laughs> it's like 50,000. Oh, okay. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not, I mean, it's not huge, but it's not a tiny, tiny town. You know, 50, it's a decent sized town. Is it, it's a farming town? Uh, no, it's a, a fishing uh, oil town. Yeah. It's a fishing oil town? Yeah. Right on the border? Predominantly, mm -hmm. yeah, right on the border. You can yeah. walk to where, wherever we were. We could, like, if, when we go to, like, a morning run, you mm -hmm. can run to the border. <laughs> <laughs> run to <laughs> you the can border. run next to the water. Run, run to the border. And yeah, the, the Rio Grande <laughs> passes, like, passes by, uh, yeah. in it. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of Latinos. Yeah. Um, predominantly. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Tell me about the casting. Um, obviously, you used your uncle um, as the uh, Mexican assassin mm -hmm. role, and um, and the actress played by what Sarah. Sarah Swinner. Um, it, she. This is her first film it's her too, first and film. everybody else is extras, and everybody from from the from town. Area, yeah, everyone so, else is yes, you know, um, either friends of family or people we just met somehow in Del Rio and kind of used, or they're the, you know, for example, the barber is the barber in his barber shop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then, you know, the city council would, you know, we had a casting call a few times at the, you know, the city council office, and so we got a lot of the teenagers from that. Mm -hmm. There was a culture center that they kind of introduced us to. We got more teen kids from that. Um, but Sarah, we found on YouTube, actually. We, uh, we uh, you know, just, uh, we're kind of big fans of YouTube, and I somehow haphazardly, um, we came across her page one day, and uh, she had put up a bunch of videos of, of you know, kind of her, um, you know, practicing accents and kind of doing a little role playing in front of the camera, and we thought it was interesting. So you know, we kind of had it in mind for something. We didn't really know what, and then we got the idea for this film, and then, you know, it kind of happened really quickly. And we said, oh, what about what about the girl on YouTube? Like, and we met her, and she was. She seemed perfect for the role, and she came down to Del Rio. And in a weird way, we kind of put Sarah in a very similar situation to the to what to what the actresses on that mm -hmm. original film said, because she didn't really know us. Yes, we we have more. You can Google us and find more about us. It's not like you know, it, yeah. it couldn't be such a scam. But she didn't have a script, um, so she didn't really know what the movie's about mm -hmm. uh, and she was learning as she was going she was hanging out mostly with, with teenagers and um, it was a, like an enjoyable process so she had to like um, with us work on a lot of scenes as they were happening and um, yeah so it was it was fun so when she was interviewed by the TV station she, she they were asking about the real film and she was trying to explain the film inside the film but she mm -hmm. didn't know what happens in neither so mm -hmm. it worked out perfectly for the scene for example so mm -hmm. we used a completely different method in directing yeah that uh, film. is this film your what second or third film that second. you get second and feature se second feature and you guys t um the first feature and this second second feature you guys worked together before yeah, yeah. Um, is, is that a difficult process or did you, you guys just, how, I mean, how do you, well, how do you think, work as you know, a team? Generally, you know, film is, uh, even when it's, you know, uh, one person 
you know, a one writer director by him, his or herself. It's still very much a collaborative thing. You know, you have people on set and you have people doing things for you and you have to communicate a vision and all this stuff. So, I mean, ultimately, I think you know, uh, film is so collaborative that it doesn't really matter. Like we collaborate together primarily, but um, it's always difficult. I mean, it's always difficult to kind of. Um, you know, get your viewpoint across, or kind of you know translate a vision, or kind of get people to be on the same page. But we've just, uh, I think, been doing it for so long now um, that we've just gotten, you know, ultimately very comfortable with each other and each other's processes, and our processes are fused together by now. You know, and it's also kind of, we uh, we only work together, which in a way we have that system set in place from the get-go. It's not like I came with a system and he came with a system and we tried to figure, we find it like a common ground to work mm -hmm. together. We learned one system because yeah. we only had worked together. So in a way, it's the same system in a weird way, but uh, so it makes it easy because otherwise there's a lot of clashes with two directors on set, mm -hmm. um, with two different, you know, bosses. So, yeah. and I think, you know, we, you know, we have a lot of friends and colleagues, you know, who make films as well, but, you know, they, at the same time, I mean, they have their producer that mm -hmm. they always work with, or they have their screenwriter, who they, you know, so it's, it's the same kind of thing, you know, you find a person that you mesh well with, and you go with it, and you take it as far as you can, and I think that's definitely what we've done, what we're doing, so. So what, so what was the most difficult thing that you guys had to do um, during this entire production? During Enrique, um, it was probably time. the it was probably the beginning. Uh, we showed up in Del Rio, um, and basically before we we decided to make Enrique, um, it really it really wasn't in the books to make Enrique. You know, we kind of we, we found out we had uh, some free time to to make a film, and so we decided to do it. And we called you know uh, five or six friends and said, Hey, we're going down to Del Rio to make a film. Do you want to come down and help us out? And, five or six friends came, you know, five or six various people. And so when we showed up, um, nothing in the way of pre-production had been done, you know. So we had about a week and a half, maybe two weeks, uh, to do all of that stuff before people started showing up and we had to start we making We to film. cast the whole movie, which is a huge amount of people, yeah. mm -hmm. and to locations, got all these locations while we were there. Um, so that was probably the hard. I mean, that was probably the most intense. But then one, once it got going, you know, it was, it was fine. But... I think that, that startup process, you know. Of, we made it between projects, yeah. to be very clear. So we had a very specific time to go make a film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we had to leave a project when it finished and come back. Um, and we were shooting something in Mexico. So we had like really one month to make another film. And it was a really big risk. We could have gone and came back with absolutely nothing. Yeah. Uh, so we tried to pull off like pre-production and production in one month in a town that we hadn't been in for like five, six years, more than like wow. five days. So yeah. we didn't even know if the town looks the same as we remember it mm -hmm. anymore. Um, so that was, yeah, that was like an intense marathon. And um, for your guys' movies, you guys like to, to have the, um, the, the, the Latino uh, type of a cultural uh, themes into it, for, from uh, my understanding from your previous movie, mm -hmm. you did the same thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the previous movie was a, a similar kind of process. Um, but it did, I mean, it wasn't Latino based or anything. I mean, it, mm -hmm. was, it was done in Lebanon, a uh, completely different, you know, culture and kind mm -hmm. of, you know, um, system. But I mean, I think that the process and the kind of, uh, the, the way we worked was very similar. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, non-actors trying to find real places, trying to find real people, mm -hmm. um, trying to use the resources that we have available to us, uh, doing the most with, yeah, um, the little that we have around us. Yeah. And um, and can you talk about some of your upcoming projects? I understand you're actually uh, you, you you have one more film that that's wrapped up, right? We finished shooting. We're we're editing it now. Um, you know we're pretty far in the edit process. We have a you know a, a cut, you know a rough cut, but we're still tweaking it. Um, but that has to be done by August. Um, I mean it has to be done done by early August. I mean it opens late August, so you know. We open in Venice Film Festival. Oh, for the Venice Film Festival? Yeah. yeah. So we're trying to finish the film. I is that speak. also another cultural theme? Uh, movie, or is that something yeah, entirely it's, different this time? It's, 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 it's more different than we've done anything before. It's but a, it's still about a small location. Uh -huh. The first film was about a small city in Lebanon. The second film was about a small town in Texas. And the third one is about a small city upstate New York. Oh, okay. Um, and I guess all three share... Like the fact that we pick a location and write for it, 
uh, also. Like, the location where the film is filmed is always a very, is a character in our yeah. film, uh, films. Um, but that's it. the last one is a, is a way bigger film. It's the first time we work with an actual uh, professional actors. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> Um, it, the ma the leads are professional actors. The rest are all locals from yeah. Troy, New York. Uh, we still couldn't take ourselves completely from non professionals. Um, and uh, yeah, all the locations are local, but it's a sci fi drama based on a Greek tragedy. So it's a completely. And well, what's the name of that film going to be? H. It's H. The just, the H. Just, just the letter H. Excellent. Let me wrap it up with one more question now. Um, with you guys, because I saw I saw the critics screening of a uh, oh, wow, um, okay. were recommended by Henry. So I was with a bunch of critics and press people, and um, when we were walking out, someone 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 yelled out, "Well, where where's the actual real horror film? I want to see that." <laughs> we have it. <laughs> and uh, and so some of the critics were saying, "Yeah, they should make that instead." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so any, anyways, will, will there be ever a chance that you guys just for the fun of it complete that movie? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I, mean, I think we, we have. Uh, yeah, uh, we I would say yes. We yeah. have. Yeah, we have plans to make more films in the Rio. Yeah, I think you know we, we kind of came up after this experience um, with an idea that maybe every few years we return to Del Rio and we make a film uh, simply with the premise of a film is shooting in Del Rio. And that's it. And it can go from there wherever it goes, you know, but that, you know, that's where it starts. Um, and it might be a nice exercise to do every, every few years, you know, to do, yeah. And hopefully in 30 years we have 10 more of these films, you know, so yeah, it could be interesting. Well, you keep on doing that, they're going to erect uh, statues.